Okay, observation number one. The Klipsch 5.1 reference theater pack has four satellites, one center channel, and one subwoofer. The Klipsch reference cinema system 5.1.4 with Dolby Atmos also has four satellites, one center channel, and one subwoofer. And yet the box is twice as big and twice as heavy. Movies. Oh. Music. Center channel. Contents in this bag. Bunch of literature. Power cable. Subwoofer cable. And a bunch of speaker wire. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Haha! <laughs> um, looks to be 16 gauge, maybe? And it's pretty thin at the ends. Most likely it's 16 gauge. Oops. This looks to be like a subwoofer. Yeah. Jeez, dude. One of the satellites. That is a lot bigger than I was expecting. <laughs> I knew this was gonna be somewhat of an upgrade from the 5.1 reference theater pack, but geez, this is significantly bigger. And yeah, just three more satellites in there. So total of four, four satellites, center speaker, subwoofer. Looks like we're good with the contents. Okay. Here's the satellite up a little closer. It is honestly hard to judge how big this is on the website. <laughs> the pictures online don't do it justice. All right, just to go over some specs. The frequency response is 90 Hertz all the way to 20,000 Hertz. Like in comparison, the reference theater pack satellites, their frequency response started at 110 Hertz. So just because of the sheer size of this thing, we're dipping down 20 more hertz in the frequency response, which is great because THX standard is 80 hertz when we're talking about crossover frequencies between the satellites and what's picked up from the subwoofer. So 10 hertz above what you would normally have for a THX standard, that's pretty good. Obviously better than the reference theater pack since those satellites are so small. Uh, you can see this magnetic grill is all one piece. We got the Klipsch logo here on the bottom. You can just bloop, pop it right off. So you can have the signature spun copper Klipsch woofer showing if you want, or just cover it up with the magnetic grill. As you can see, we have the upward firing Atmos speaker on top. Nice. The sensitivity is 92 decibels. That is pretty darn sensitive. It's not gonna take a lot of power to get this loud, which is typical for Klipsch. Klipsch is renowned for having very sensitive speakers and this is no exception. Power handling is 75 watts RMS with a peak of 300. This is eight ohm nominal. This is a one inch aluminum LTS tweeter, made it to a 90 by 90 Tractrix horn, which is Klipsch's signature. This woofer down here is 5.25 inch spun copper IMG woofer. I honestly wasn't expecting this woofer to be 5.25 inches. So that right there was already a surprise. We've got base reflex dual front firing ports, which is pretty cool. Height is 13.47 inches high. The width is 6.47 inches and the depth is 7.45 inches. So yeah, these are, these are big. <laughs> Weight 8.2 pounds. You know, build quality is pretty solid. It's definitely some nice rigid plastic. It's not like covered in MDF or anything. So because of the price point, I didn't think it was gonna be this 
super expensive, rigid composite material that it was going to be covered in. We got a nice little pad down here. It's nice and grippy, so it's not going to go anywhere when you set it on a surface. Like if, you had, if you set it on a speaker stand, for instance, or a bookshelf. And down here you can see the spring-loaded clips for your speaker wire. And I don't know if you can see this, but there are four holes corresponding to the for speaker terminals, positive and negative, because it says right here, it's, good, it's obviously gonna be hard to see from there, but it says right here, main minus plus and height minus plus. So yes, you do have the main and the height speaker wire terminals, both on this satellite speaker. That way you get your ear level audio coming out of the woofer and the tweeter and you got your Atmos height information firing up to your ceiling and bouncing down. The power handling of the upward firing driver is 40 watts RMS and 160 watts peak. So not that powerful. <laughs> But honestly, that is pretty typical with your Atmos enabled upward firing speakers. And the woofer itself is four inches and made of a poly fiber material. I'm just gonna put this back on. Nah, give me this back. Sweet. Center channel. Again, we've got a nice grippy pad here for going on a bookshelf or a center channel speaker stand. We've got our spring-loaded terminals here for the speaker wire. Hold that down, feed it in, let go. It bites down. We've got your standard mounting thread holes here. Two of them since it's going to be oriented horizontally. In fact, I totally forgot to point that out on the satellite as well. We've got the threaded mounting screw hole right there too. So these can be mounted if your mounts can handle 8.2 pounds. Also, magnetic grill easily comes off. Let's go over some specs on this bad boy. The center channel frequency response is 80 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So that already goes all the way down to THX specifications. Sensitivity is 91 decibels. The center channel power handling is the same as the satellite. 75 watts RMS, 300 watts peak, also eight ohm nominal. It also has a one inch LTS tweeter, made it to the Trantrix horn, of course. And these are dual four inch IMG spun copper woofers. The height is 5.16 inches with 17.6 inches. And the depth is 6.07 inches. Weight is 7.4 pounds. So just a little bit lighter than the satellites. And that's the center. Subwoofer, watcher. Okay, let's go over some specs. Uh, frequency response starts at 32 hertz and goes up to 120 hertz. Now, 32 hertz isn't all that great, especially when we're talking about deep sub bass in movies. But, I mean, honestly, I would still consider this an entry level Dolby Atmos speaker system but I honestly wasn't expecting to be blown away by the specs of this particular subwoofer considering it comes with four other satellites with upward firing speakers and a center channel. But I know 32 Hertz on paper isn't that great, but just stay tuned for my official review after I've listened to these for a few days. The internal amplifier is all digital. The power rating is 150 Watts continuous with a 300 Watt peak rating. It has a gain or volume knob, low pass filter or crossover frequency adjustment knob, on off switch, phase control, and line inputs. And as you can see here, it has a base reflex rear firing port. So you would want to keep this at least six to 12 inches away from a wall since it is rear firing. The dimensions are 14.5 inches high, 12.5 inches wide, and 16.4 inches deep. And it weighs 24 pounds. Now, with the removable grills of the satellite and the center speaker, those are just, you just take them right off. They're super easy. It doesn't take much effort to take them on and off. But this, just because we're dealing with bass and low frequencies, you don't want the grill to be rattling. So instead of a piece that can come on and off real easily, it's actually a grill that is in there pretty tight, which is common among subwoofer grills. We're just gonna be nice and gentle. 
Boop. Here we go. And as we can see here, we have the signature copper spun IMG woofer, 10 inches and obviously front firing. And lastly, unlike the center channel and satellite speakers, which are encased in hard plastic, this cabinet is MDF, which has actually got a little wood veneer on it to make it look like some nice wood. So it's got a pretty nice touch to it. And that's about it as far as the specs. Quick comparison. Here we have the reference theater pack satellite speaker and the new reference cinema system satellite speaker. Again, the photos online do not give it justice. It is so much bigger. Hi, my woofer is only three and a half inches. Mine's 5.25 inches. And I have a four inch upward firing driver profile. So yeah, when I first saw this online, I was thinking this was just gonna be maybe a reference theater pack 2.0. But clearly the cinema system is its own beast. Here is the reference theater pack center channel and the reference cinema system center channel. So much longer, taller, deeper. It's just bigger, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we have the eight inch reference theater pack subwoofer, which is downward firing with this cute little base port here. <laughs> and the front firing 10 inch subwoofer of the reference cinema system. I mean, come on. This is more of a rectangle and this is pretty much a cube. And then don't forget this big old base port on the back. Dang. So there you have it. Uh, much bigger than I was anticipating. Obviously at this point, the most significant question is, how does it sound? So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna put it through some tests, test the system out with my go-to movie scenes that I love to watch to see just how well some speakers can perform. So if you're not subscribed already, you better do it. All right, folks, until then, Always be listening.